Is it the side of life or the side of death? The question that comes home to each of us is, upon what foundation am I building? It's amazing how we deny Christ in our lives. How many people call themselves Christians and yet live a life that Christ would not live if he was here today? How many of us call ourselves Christians and we shout at the top of the hilltops and yet the places that we frequent to seek for education, Christ would not be there if he were here today? And yet we think that, no, Christ will, Christ approves, it's okay. You can hide it from your pastor, from your father, from your uncles and everybody that this is the respected way. But if Christ were here today, he would not attend that place because God's name is not honored in that place. How many of us are told that Christ never went to the common schools and they just say, no, 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 you know, you're, you're misinterpreting the word of God. How many of us believe the word of God, the whole word of God, every word? Look at the life of Jesus Christ. And we are told that upon no other foundation can we be known except that of Christ. When Christ says, take up your cross and follow me, how many of us do really believe that? question that comes home to each of us, upon what foundation am I built? There are two roads. When you reach a point, you have to make a decision. Which way are you going? You see, those roads are going to different locations. However wide, however neat, however respectable, however popular the road, if it's not leading to heaven, it doesn't matter. It will never get you. Even if it gives you wealth, even if it makes you popular, even if you are respectable, you are in good and regular standing, even if it brings unity to the church, even if it makes you the head, the head of the church or deacon or deaconess, if that road is not leading to heaven, it will never get you to heaven. When we came, we reached a junction here. We're coming from Ken Tono's house. And that junction read to the left, to, to that side is going to where? Is going to, no, no, that junction from, from, Kissing. when you from Ken's house. Kissing. Yeah, to the, if I'm going to, I'm meeting that junction to my left, is going to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. yes. What is that? Migori. Migori. And to the right, is going to Kisi. Now, however sincere I am, and I'm on this road to Migori, however sincere and diligent, will I get to Kisi? No. No. How come we know that so well? And yet you can be so sincere in the road that the word of God has told you is leading to death. And you will say, no, God will save me on this road. <laughs> For other foundation can no man lay than this, and that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In him alone is our salvation. There is none other name under heaven given among men where we must be saved. It is though God has given us a pattern. Our character building is to be after the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Remember when God called Moses to the mountain and he told him that you're going to build for me a sanctuary according to the pattern of the mount? The law is the great standard of righteousness. It represents the character of God and is the test of our loyalty to his government. And it's revealed to us in all its beauty and excellence in the life of Christ. The law is the detector of sin. Okay? So the law of God is the standard of is the standard of uh, measurement of character. It is the one by which we will be judged. And is the one that shows us our need of a savior. All the bright capabilities that men possess of mind and soul 
selfish and exclusive culture for the character of God whose likeness we are to receive is benevolence and love. When you look at the way we develop our talents, the way we develop our abilities, society ingrains in us selfishness. From the time we can speak the first word, from the time that we can be able to recognize our parents, we are taught religiously about pride, about selfishness. And as the child develops their talents, they are praised and they are they, they are encouraged to develop them for their own selfish gain. And even when a parent is sending his child to school, they are thinking, how can I fit that child to support himself for his own selfish gain? He never puts in the child's mind the fact that he needs to serve others. And so by the time we finish university, we are thoroughly selfish. By the time you get your first job, it is for me and myself and myself alone. We are taught pride and selfishness. And so the development of those characters that God gave us has been corrupted by the methods of education that are available today. And so we don't say that true education is, is the shunning of development of talents. No, but they should be developed according to the giver. Of those talents. What is the character of God? It is to serve others. It is to be to have love. It is to be obedient to God's law, which is the pattern. <coughs> but in the schools of today, where education is supposedly given, the law of God is trampled. The word of God is rejected. How can you then claim that you are developing that you are God-given talents when you don't follow the pattern of the giver of those talents? Every faculty, every attribute with which the Creator has endowed us is to be employed for His glory and for the uplifting of our fellow men. And in this employment is found its purest, noblest, and happiest exercise. Did you read that? Can you read that for me? Read this read together. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. 
not answering, say that we must have. We are told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will lay down the net. And when they had done, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net broke. And they become their partners, which were in the other ship, and they should, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man for you. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drop of the fishes which he had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt touch me. And when they had brought their ships to land, can you read for me that? And when they had brought their ships to land, can you finish that? Have you ever read that statement? This was professional fishing. They were doing that which they had experienced. I'm sure they had families. I'm sure they needed the money. But when they saw what Christ could do, what did they do? They pursued all for the Peter and Simon Peter and who else? They pursued all and followed. They didn't even go to sell the fish. They never went to sell the fish. They left the fish there. And their nets and their sheep. They left them. They pursued all and followed. Christ's method was different. Christ did not need them to sell the fish so that they can finance their commission. Christ did not need them to do the conventional business to finance their commission. They followed Christ's money. And later Peter was asking Jesus Christ, you know, Master, we have left all. What shall we get? We have left everything. Jesus promised him that they will get a hundred more because they have forsake all. Now, are we ready to forsake all for Christ? Are we ready to forsake all that this world offers and follow him and his pattern? Are we ready to follow his plan? Because God has a plan. If you look at the history, the Israelites from Abraham, Abraham forsook all his family and followed. Moses forsook all that Egypt offered him. He was to be the next Pharaoh, but he saw that all that will be a pleasure overseas. He left everything and he followed the call of God. How many of us are ready to forsake all that the world is offering and follow the path of obedience? We forsake all and follow him. Because Jesus Christ says that he who loves his father more than me is not done. If you love your sister or your brother or whoever more than Christ, you're not done. And so true education is forsaking all that the world offers and following that which Christ has set for us. It is building on Jesus Christ. Looking at Christ, our perfect example. How did he live? What kind of life did he have? It was not a glamorous life. When Christ came from the heavenly court, let me tell you, Christ was the commander of the heavenly court. He was the creator of everything. And when man sings, and he 
heavenly beings were wondering, how is man going to be saved? Everybody looked around, who is going to save man? And the Son of God stepped forward. And the angels couldn't believe it. But you mean our commander is going to be like, and you know, and they have been shown what will happen. I said, do you know you're going to be rejected, you're going to be persecuted, and eventually you will kill you? And Jesus Christ said, I am going to do it. He forsook all to come and save us. Now, what is it that you are forsaking there is so much? That Christ did it. He forsook all his royalty, all the glory that he had to come and save us. And so today we are being told to build on that foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Many people call the name of Christ, but they have no idea what it is. They love the glory, but they hate the sacrifice. They still want the comforts of this life. Nobody wants to go and trade for his family. Nobody wants to be a missionary. True education is missionary training. To serve others. In whatever capacity that God will place you. That is true education. If Peter and John left their business, they left their necks, they forsook all to follow Christ, to be fishers of who? Of men. I want you to think about that story, the whole of this week. Peter and John forsook all and followed Christ. Parents, teachers, students, remember that you are building for eternity. See that your foundation is sure. Then build firmly and with persistent effort. But in meekness, gentleness, love. We are building for eternity. Our actions, our decisions, our careers, our occupations determine where we are going. If we are actuated by selfishness, by pride, by worldly ambitions, by a world loving church, if those are the things that give us the passion, then you know that we are building on a different kind of eternity. And it's not the one that God desires us to have. The portion prepared by for Satan. But if we build on Jesus Christ, and many people say in Christ, in Christ, they don't know what they're talking about. Christ's life was a simple life. He was humble, he was kind, he was gentle, he was patient, and he gave all in order to save you and me. He didn't have to come. He didn't have to save us. We didn't even ask him. Because he saved us while we are still sinners. How can we reject such love? What greater sacrifice do you think you can make? If God is telling you to follow his pattern. And so this week we are going to look at the pattern that Christ has given us and then measure that with the life that we are living today. Let us look at the pattern. Now we have set the foundation. We all agree that we should be building on Christ. Having agreed that, then let us look at our methods of education today. Let us look at the paths that our education today is taking us. And at the end of the week, you can decide for yourself whether you are in the right path. So shall your house stand and shake not only when the storms of temptation come, but when the overwhelming flood of God's wrath shall sweep over the world. We say, we are remember, remember we are building for what? For eternity. Make sure your foundation is sure. Make sure you are building on the rock. And so that your house shall be unshaken when those storms of temptation come. When the overwhelming flood of God's wrath shall sweep over the world, remember the plagues will be soon coming. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him.
they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, he shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given. And so, it's my prayer that we shall build on the rock, Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ asked one person in his appeal who wanted to follow him, are you sure you can you can do what? What was the question Jesus Christ asked? Can you carry the cross that the Son of Man will carry? You need to count the cost. It is not an easy journey to follow to build on the rock. You will be hated of all men because Christ was hated. You need to have a different thinking a different paradigm shift. People don't understand what education is. We have all been misled. They don't understand at all what true education is. We saw there that character building is a work of a lifetime. <coughs> and character goes, into, into character goes all the things, the actions, the things we learn, and the teachers who teach us those things, their temperaments, their habits, their beliefs, Everything that we learn adds on to our character. And so the methods of education are very, very important. If you have the wrong methods, you have got the wrong person. You've got the wrong character. And here we have been given the law of God is our standard and the word of God should be our instructor. If you are going through an education system which respects the law of God and which the Bible is the center of instruction, then you are on the right path. Are you building on the rock? Is your foundation sure? Because every day you are adding on stone upon stone. And it costs you time and money as you are building. But is your foundation sure? Are you following on the footsteps of the master? Are you ready to go the narrow path? Or are you, are you going through the wide road in which many people are treading, which leads to destruction? It's my prayer that you think about the story of Peter. Peter built on the rock. When he saw what Christ offered, all the things of the world for him were insignificant. And so many of the disciples forsook all that they had. Matthew, Matthew was who? He was not uh, was employed by the government to collect that. He was working for KRA. And he walked away from it. Many of the disciples forsook of the following. But today we call ourselves disciples of Christ, but we would rather cling on to the ways of the world. We would rather stay in Babylon. We don't want to leave Babylon. Even when we have been told, flee for your life. You want to work in Babylon? You want to go to the Babylonian schools? You want to get the Babylonian jobs? And still say, we are marching to Zion. Building on the rock. This is my question. And it's my prayer that your rock should be the foundation on which your house will be, so that you shall eat the fruit of the doing. May God bless you. Amen. Father, we thank you because of the word that is a lamp unto our feet and our light unto our path. Don't you know that there is darkness that has covered the world? Darkness has covered even our church, even the very elect are in deep darkness because they have loved the world and the ways of the world and the education of the world and so they have received the mold of the world and so they don't seem to discern between the things of time and the things of eternity. And so this morning, Lord, we come to you that we might build on the rock which is Jesus Christ. He came and gave us the pattern of which we must follow. You who had everything, who was the Son of God, who was heir to everything that God owns, forsook all to come and save us. And so we see that in the patriots, we see that in the apostles. Everybody followed your pattern. They forsook all and followed you. How it 
is by faith that we too, the remnant of these last days, may forsake all and follow you. Lord, we pray that everyone in this house will make a choice to build on the rock of Jesus Christ. That we may forsake the customs and the maxims of the world. That we may seek the path of true education that will prepare our characters for eternity. May this be our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.